Uh, over the last five to ten years, there has been an increase in the number of graduates coming out of universities, from increased graduate numbers uh, to increasing the number of universities who actually have a pharmacy degree, which has in turn increased the number of graduates we have. So the pharmacy profession for a long period of time had been in short supply, so they're, you know, finding a pharmacy was very difficult for a long period of time. And now the opposite has happened. Uh, and to some extent, uh, that is a maldistribution, so there is a lot of pharmacists, I think, within the metropolitan or large uh, cities, and few pharmacists rurally or remotely. And there are still quite good opportunities going all the time in those sorts of areas. It may be more difficult now to find a job in a metropolitan area. Um, but I think the profession needs to look at that the similar way that the medical profession has looked at it. There's compulsory rotations in rural and remote areas. Um, there's some research to show that if you've worked in these areas, you may be more likely to stay there. If you've done a student placement in these areas, you might be more likely to go back. Um, whereas pharmacy, you basically arrange your own intern year. And I think a lot of those applications come into the metropolitan areas because that's where it's a nice place to live for people of that generation, I suppose. Um, the point I was going to go on to make was now that there is... So when you have a short supply of a profession, it's very hard for a pharmacist to do anything else than what their core role was, which was dispensing. And so you don't have that critical mass to go and take on these extra roles because there's not enough people to do it on a large scale. Now there is more pharmacists in the workforce who may be able to take on roles which we traditionally should have been doing but just didn't have the workforce or capacity to do it. And the things I'm talking about is what I'm doing here in the medical centre, working for governmental organisations like Medicare or the Therapeutic Goods Association uh, Administration. So there are pharmacists in those areas but there's not a lot of them. Uh, you know, working in health clinics, um, outreach clinics and those sorts of things which pharmacists just were never thought of being a part of, but really, if you do think about it, would have a very important role uh, in that area. So, you know, I think we need the critical mass to expand the role to where the pharmacists should be better utilised or utilised appropriately within the current healthcare system. Um, and so, you know, unless, unless we had that increase in, in student numbers, that was never going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, one of the downsides of that is if everyone wants to work in the same place, things like wages and stuff will go down. It's a supply and demand uh, type situation. But, you know, pharmacists, uh, if you, uh, the other thing with that is that when you do have um, a lot of pharmacists in one area, you, you then need to start uh, distinguishing yourself from other people, from other pharmacists. And so that promotes continued education, higher academic learning and those sorts of things, which are all good things for the profession. So unless we have that influx of pharmacists, I mean, I'm not saying go and broaden and have too many, but unless we, can, we haven't been in a situation where we've, had this situ where we've had this problem before, and I don't see it as a problem, I see it as an opportunity to, be, uh, to utilise pharmacists much more be in a better way. I think organisations like the PSA have a role. I think they can, um, I think they can help facilitate the process to some extent, maybe at a higher level. Um, and I'm meaning it, you know, a governmental level or an organisational level, um, or a coordinating level. So if pharmacists want to do this, there, there is some way that they can communicate with one another. But really, you know, I think it's down to the individual pharmacist creating the opportunity for themselves. Um, there's recently, I think there's been an expectation that once you graduate, you're going to be given a job, the pay is going to be this, etc., etc. And I think the concept of having to work for that, or go out and do something new, or innovative, or make yourself uh, a step above the rest has sort of gone, there's an expectation that they'll get certain things, graduates will get certain things. And maybe that may be a generational type thing, I don't know, I don't think that's completely the answer. Um, I think, you know, someone once asked me at a conference, how did I get to where I was? And I don't think I answered it very well, I think I said, you know, I did study and all this sort of stuff. 
And really what I probably should have said was it took hard work. You know, I didn't sit back and hope things would happen for me. I went out and approached the medical centre. I went and applied for to do clinical training. Um, you know, I took the leap of faith of going to speak to people who who I didn't want to go and actually speak to because I was intimidated. Um, uh, and then I did the hard yards. I, I, I worked for a period of time. Um, maybe in a job where I didn't want to be particularly for a long period of time, but I, I, I was there doing it until I was in a position where I could take advantage of another opportunity. So um, what I say to people is you've got to be willing to work hard and you know, the success and the results will, will follow from there.